Hello everybody, Drew here, tip of the mint flips, where I'm a full-time eBay reseller, and every one of my subscribers, there's a giveaway. So if you're watching, make sure you subscribe so you have a chance to win. I have seven orders going out today, and one fantastic one. So I'm actually going to save it till last, even though it should be first, because, you know, got to build up to it. Uh, first thing going out, I did end up listing, um, if you hadn't watched before, I went and got some more stuff from my dad's house. Um, basically the last of my toys, I think, I hope not though, because there's still some stuff that I'm missing. I mean, it could have been gone when I was, you know, eight years old and I just thought I still had it. I don't know. A few cool things. Listed all my Hot Wheels. There was three red lines, a lot of 70s, 80s, 90s, you know, vintage stuff. Ended up being... I got it all listed, ended up being total, they're all free shippers, so somewhere between $250 and $300 worth of cars. Also, a couple just cool things. This Fiero, this Pontiac Fiero, the batteries had corroded and exploded in there. People, take your batteries out before you put something in storage. I mean, I'm not going to put that on my parents, even though I was a child. They should have taken the batteries out, but... They were my toys, whatever. Uh, but I was able to get that cleaned out, get it running. And it's really weird because for parts only, this is selling for about 50 bucks. And then fully functioning, it's selling for about 50 bucks. That doesn't make any sense to me. Whatever. I'm going to list mine for about 75. Also, there was a couple of trucks like this. Battery acid got on this, rusted it a little bit, but I was able to clean most of it off and make it look really good. Uh, not like falsifying, but like get it cleaned up. I think that's 30-ish bucks. Unfortunately, those batteries in this, not worth a ton of money, like $20, but it's complete trash. It had corroded the metal completely off. Just the the, the uh, tabs just broke right off. So that's trash donation. Maybe the kids will want it just to play because it's got this cool extending ladder there. I don't know, whatever. And then uh, this one, this is why I th still think there's a, a box somewhere because the truck to this is missing and there's no reason for that to be missing. I don't know where it could be, would be, no idea. So I assume there's still one more box somewhere, but the best part about the best part about the cars is like I said, 250 to $300. And this is the footprint. I mean, it's a, this is a eight by two eight by six by six or something like that. I don't remember exactly. Um, eight by six by four. And this is holding all of them. And I, then what I did is I individually bagged them and then I gave them an individual SKU number so I know where the cards are at and then which bag so I can easily reference. And once these are empty, I'm gonna put the empty bags back in the box. And so I can continue to use that SKU number system. And with other smalls, I can just keep going. I'll probably replace the box with some type of basket or a larger container of some kind once I come across one. Because I'm not going to buy one, but you know, maybe I'll steal one of those Lego boxes. That might work. Who knows? Let's get to pulling. First thing going out, speaking of Hot Wheels, Hot Wheels, Brian, snow and dirt removal. Let's use the SKU number I just was talking about. Car 5. There we go. Car 5. And it's overfilled right now, so it's a little hard to get through them. But that will hopefully thin out and be okay. But this one, very cool. Brian, snow removal. Um, I listed it $17.99, got an offer $14.99, took it. And that's, uh, you know, like a 19, 1979 on that one. Couple things, because I'm not a Hot Wheels buyer collector, you know, I'm now a seller. But a couple things to watch out for. Pre- 1990 that makes them the worth somewhere between three and five dollars what's called real riders which is if the vehicle's tires are not plastic like this one where instead they are rubber they usually say goodyear on them the tires alone you can rip them off the car if the car is too far gone and the tires alone you'll get 9.99 free shipping for a set of four because i'm assuming people have a missing one and they put it on or whatever and then the third thing Red lines. Most people know what red lines are. I think that means that they're pre-1970. I don't know. That would all be a guess. I have no idea. But they got a red line on the tire. That makes them worth somewhere between 25 and 
hundreds of dollars. So those are the things to look out for. Next thing up, A5 is a Vans off the wall. Vintage, I think, but maybe not. Could be modern, trying to look vintage. Uh, off the wall backpack. It's probably not vintage, actually. Maybe I put it in the title. I did not put vintage in the title. Don't know why I mentioned it. $18.99 free shipping. And then next through the global shipping program is a book, Victoria Holt, My Enemy the Queen. Right here. That one, uh, first edition with the dust jacket. Actually, that's a first edition book club edition. So that's not a first edition. $19.99 free shipping. And how that works is they could have released a book club and a first edition at the exact same time, but the actual first editions are where the, the value is. Um, next up, went back and forth with this buyer. I kind of let their message influence how much money I was willing to take, but it is CCR Greatest Hits in Original Shipping Box. I cannot get this out here as is. I do have to do something about this area over here. These these books just got to get relocated. I've said it too many times. I've moved stuff too many times. It's got to happen. And why I say original shipping box, because this has the label from my father ordering this. It doesn't matter because it's, it's in Texas, which I don't live in Texas. But this is the cool part right here. Shipping from Credence Clearwater. So, you know, was the band in there labeling these things and putting them out? No, but that's just kind of, I thought that was neat to throw in there. Ended up going $25 free shipping. I had it listed, I think, $34.99. And he said it's for his dad's birthday and he couldn't go any higher. I said, okay. Okay. <laughs> but unfortunately, the issue is, and why I should have probably done that, is because I'm including the original shipping box, I have to put a box around this box. I can't just slap a label on that. That would be kind of false advertising that I say, oh, it includes this box with the original label, and I just slap a USPS label on it. Not cool. Uh, next up is a VHS Barney's Colorful World. VHS only, no case, right there. And I got $8.99 free shipping. Some of you may remember, but if you haven't looked up how much you can get for some Barney VHS tapes, look it up. Some of the, f I, I think it was like the first run, like maybe before it was on PBS or something. I don't know the exact details, but a lot of money. And even not those ones, it's still, normally this would be a $9.99, $12.99, $14.99, but it's got no case. But Barney VHS, good stuff. $8.99 free shipping if I didn't say. Next up, it's a book cabinet making. It's a big one, easy to find right here. And mill working, big old book. And for that, $17.99 free shipping. And then last up is the big one I was talking about. It is vac... I'm going to put the camera down because it's expensive. All right, it is vacuum tube radio PF116 Pagoda Sharp. Hayakawa Denkai 1940s. And for that radio, fully functioning, 375 plus shipping. I had it listed for 450. I knew I wasn't going to get 450. I've been sending out offers of 399.99 since I listed it to any available um, watchers or anybody I'm allowed to send out an offer to. And then I got countered uh, last night. I think last night they came back with 375 and I said, yep, thank you. Cause I was hoping for anything over 200, but this is a, I'm not going to say this is a one of a kind. Cause of course it's not, but there were comps of one sold and it was this style, but not this exact one. The other one was like a creamish color. If I'm remembering correctly, different painting on it, but same radio. And that one I think went for about 300 bucks and was in much better condition. This one's missing the knobs. This one, a mouse chewed a hole in and I think was living in it. And so they chewed the cord. And so the cord had to be repaired. Uh, there was a little bit of damage to that back where they had, they had gnawed on a little bit, but took it out, repaired the cord, 
cleaned the inside, included all that information in the listing that the cord had been repaired and the buttons are missing, and that this these speckles, this is not a night sky. This is from, this was my aunt's before she passed away. She was painting and just like had it out in the room for some silly reason. So those are paint droplets, but I wasn't willing to try to clean them off for fear that I might actually damage the the painting on it or actually remove some of this this painting on there because this is that's hand painted. So I just put that in the listing too. Said it probably will come off, but I'm not gonna make that call. The gentleman he said, uh, thanks for taking my offer. Hopefully I can find original knobs. You know, it's a beautiful piece, blah blah blah. And I was that's kind of stuff. I love it. I love that it's going to somebody who is really gonna enjoy it. And this was the kind of thing I was talking about the other day where Items people want, not p items people need. They get bought no matter what external things are going on because it's spare money for those type of people. I'm not going to ever go buy a $400 antique tube radio. Who, who has that kind of money? Just sitting around like, yeah, I kind of want one of those. Let me go, go over to eBay. What are they worth? Okay, let me see if I can get a bargain. Oh, boom, bought it. Can't wait to have it. That, that type of mindset blows my mind, but... That's, these are the types of things you should be targeting to fill your store with. You can't fill your store with them because they're not readily available. But it's the things you should always be targeting. Things people want, not need. But they also, um, they said, hey, I'm, so obviously they're a collector. They said, I'm not sure if you've ever shipped something like this. Shipped a tube radio. They said, you got to take the back off, bubble wrap the inside or take the tubes out, bubble wrap them separately because they'll move around in shipping. They'll break. They'll you know, not function when I, when I get it, blah, blah, blah. And I said, that's great. I, I have, but I would gladly do that again. And I'm also going to add, normally I don't, no matter the price, add additional insurance, but I'm going to add additional insurance just because peace of mind for both of us. Also for the extra like buck, two bucks, maybe it's going to cost. It's the customer I think appreciates it and likes to hear that, uh, might give you a return customer, stuff like that. Not proven, just my personal thoughts. All right, so today we are packing up a Sharp PF116 tube radio. Very cool piece, $375. So definitely gonna take some extra care. I've already taken out the screws from the back because we're going to wrap up the tubes so they don't jostle around during shipping. And this is very helpful. It's a tape measure. The, it has a magnet on the back so that normally, hope I don't lose one of these screws, normally what I do is I stick it on my, my tape dispenser there and it's always there. I always know where it is. But it's also great when I'm pulling off little tiny screws, I flip it over, magnetize, and it's a good place so you don't lose them. If you're interested in one of these, link in the description. So I already took the screws out and the back off, save a little time. So we're gonna flip her around, lay it down flat, and then I just have some scraps of small bubble bubble wrap that I'm going to tuck in the best I can. All right, cut them into some smaller pieces just so it's easy to work with. And we're just gonna start finding good places to tuck it in. Okay, and once I have it tucked in around the tubes, um, then I'm just gonna kind of fill in the rest uh, just to hold everything in place, the, the bubble wrap itself. So it has something to push again and doesn't come out of place. You do wanna make sure you're not smashing it down and overstuffing. You don't want when you're putting the back on that it mushes down and moves the tubes around. Um, just just be cautious. Nothing to be scared of, but just be aware of what you're doing. And if something doesn't feel like it's moving right or going easily, don't force it. And now you'll switch over to either medium or large bubble and just give it a wrap around in both directions. As far as bubble wrap, I buy it from American Bubble Boy. Not sponsored, not affiliated, just best I've found as far as um, shipping times, quality of product, all of the above. Now, my hope is that this fits in a number seven, um, but we will find out together. All right, so I built out my USPS number seven box. And normally, if you watched how I pack glassware, what I would do now is put one piece of bubble in the bottom, but not because of fragility, if that's a word, but because just of the cost of the item, I'm gonna go a little extra than I normally would. 
And so if I'm going more than I would with something that's glass, I don't even want to say assume, then I'm going to be sure that I'm safe. So I'll take two layers of bubble, put it in the bottom. With the something that costs this much amount or something that has this much profit on it, if you lose a couple bucks on shipping, that is well worth it. Whereas sometimes on a $10, $15 item, not so much. All right, and it's gonna fit perfect with enough space on all sides to add some extra packing. On the uh, wide side of it though, it's very little space. So what I am gonna do is just use another piece of bubble on the sides, just because stuffing paper in there is gonna be too much hassle and, and just not easy. What's gonna end up happening is it'll get shoved to one side and I'll only get paper on one side. So I'm gonna do one layer, extra layer of bubble on the these outer sides. And because I just took two pieces and I wrapped it around the whole unit because I added those ones on the side, now on the bottom, there is four layers of bubble wrap. So definitely good there. There is still a little room, but now I can shove it to the one side and fill in, and I don't have to worry that the other side isn't getting enough padding. So from here, paper is my next goal. Okay, so the paper I am currently using, it's not always what I use, but it's a very thick uh, craft paper. It's not great when you're trying to ship something first class because it's too heavy, but with something like this, it's perfect because once you put it in, even if this thing moves around a bunch or if it weighs a lot, it's not gonna smash the paper because it's a very, very thick paper. If you do use newspaper or newsprint or anything like that, make sure you're really compressing it. So in shipping, when it does move back and forth, if it does at all, that it's not gonna compress the paper and then be able to move around. But right now, this thing cannot move, period. So then fill bubble to the top from here, because I don't want to resize it. I want all the protection I can get. I think that's all that'll fit there. I always just do a crisscross of tape across. Sometimes I'll tape the seams. And on this specific item, I am going to tape the seams. Um, but it's more of a vapor barrier than because I think the box is gonna open up or anything like that. And then always, 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 in my opinion, I guess, you don't gotta follow what I'm saying. If you're here, you're probably wanting to know how I do it. Always tape the seam. It's not worth the risk that that glue is gonna pop loose. So when you are pricing something like this, that is rare, a one of one possibly, but you know it has a value, what I did because because I could have just looked at the other listings and said, okay, these ones sold for 300 bucks, 350 or whatever it was. Mine is in worse condition, so therefore it's worth less. No, it's not. It's it, the, the availability has to be priced in a little bit. So if I put it out there for 300 bucks or 250, somebody's gonna offer me $200. So I took the listings that were out there and I priced mine higher because Mine is the only one available. And if somebody wants it, they have to buy mine. And then when they go to negotiate and they knock 75 bucks off the price, they think they got a great deal, which I don't know. Maybe they did get a great deal because it's a rare, unique item and they desired it and they seem happy with the price. So just something to consider. Now, a little weird sidebar here is my eBay app on my phone is no longer working. I I mean, I can use it to search, but I cannot do a sell similar. I can't populate a new listing, which is fine because I had, oh, got a visitor. Uh, which is fine because I had just switched over to my new way of listing where I take all photos first and then I list later. So I do that at my computer. So that was weird timing that it worked out like that. But I'll put a picture here this is what happened first. I went to search something and this is what came up. That was like, okay, that's weird. So I just refreshed and backed out and it went away. So then when I went to go list something and do a cell similar, this appeared. And this has been appearing every time I try to do it ever since. I'm not gonna go to eBay customer service or anything like that because the time spent doing that, I could just walk to my computer and list on there, wasted time. Maybe I'll open a chat if I'm on the computer on a weekend board or whatever and try to figure it out then. But I deleted the app, I re-downloaded. Just to, if anybody else is having the same issue, please let me know. If it's just me, <laughs> that would just make too much sense. Say goodbye, Blackbeard.
Well, that's gonna be all for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, go ahead and give it a thumbs down. Subscribe, share, and be good to each other. <laughs>